Hello everyone, welcome to 27. What I'm going to show you today is something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Essentially, it's a comparison between a modern hot hatch and a traditional old sports car. Now, they're reasonably well matched, these cars. Cost-wise, I think you can get a second-hand GTI with a bit of mileage on it for about 20k. And this is a 968, Porsche 968 Sport, and they go for between 15 to 20k as well. The Club Sport version actually goes for 30k. There isn't a huge amount of difference between them, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So the thing is, I'm always banging on about how much I hate modern cars, how lifeless they are, how crap they are to drive. Yes, they're good at everything, but they're so boring. They've got no character. There's no feel. There's no fun in them. And instead, how the older traditional sports cars are so much more to give, so much more fun to drive. So I'm really putting my money where my mouth is this time. The Porsche 968 Club Sport was um, claimed to be by Walter Roll as the best handling car that Porsche ever made. This is a Porsche 968 Sport. So in terms of suspension, it's exactly the same. It just has a few more creature comforts. So it's acknowledged as one of the best handling sports cars out there. How will it compare to a modern Golf GTI? These have also been praised as GTI coming back to form, brought the fun back to Golf GTIs, and it's also the first modern VW that I've featured on the channel, mainly because I'm just not that interested in them generally. The whole VW Audi group stuff just doesn't particularly appeal to me. But this is supposed to be really, really good. Power-wise, this is 240 horsepower from a three litre inline four, or straight four as they call it, but I think that's exactly the same thing. And again, another inline four. With about 220, 240 horsepower, this one's been chipped, so it puts out a little bit more apparently, but um, we're not sure exactly how much. So let's see how they compare. I'm starting off in the Gulf. Bear in mind that this road is quite crowded, so I hope I'm gonna get a fair idea of what it's like. First impressions, great, Great driving position, everything you'd expect from a VW, really nicely finished, nice interior. Car feels good, feels nice. Pretty good, really, to be honest. Um, let's see how it actually drives. So 3,000, put your foot down. Three and a half, it really goes. It pulls all the way up to six. It's um, reasonably quick but I think the bit where it really goes like a normal turbo is sort of three and a half to five has got that wedge of torque that makes it feel quick. It's not an exciting sounding engine at all. It, it sounds really pretty average. Um, not average, it sounds crap. There's, there's nothing remotely sporty about it or interesting or anything like that. Um, so in terms of sound, not great. Um, but it pulls well enough and um, it revs. Feels now, I think these have the sort of electro wizardry sort of diffs at the front. And um, they do seem to rein the chassis in actually quite well. Uh, if you put your foot down in a corner, it goes so much better than I've ever experienced in any front wheel drive car except for maybe the. Um, Mini GT that I had before, not Mini GT, what am I saying? Uh, Mini GP that I had before, uh, and that had a mechanical limited slip diff in it. Um, all in all, not bad impressions. Now, the stuff that I always bitch about on these cars is the steering, the gear change, you can't describe the gear change as exactly mechanical, but it's, it's, it's okay, actually. It's not bad. Um, it's nice and short. You can feel that you're stirring something. It's not just like a, a pot of plastic, like some of the new ones. Um, so it's, um, it's all right. It can be a bit clunky, actually, moving up through some of the gears, and maybe that's just me and I need to get used to it. Steering, really, 
It's not overly light actually, but there's pretty much zero real feel coming through, um, as you would expect with these sort of modern hatches. But the GTI really does work well in corners. It, it, it holds on tenaciously. I haven't felt a whiff of understeer. And if you just chuck it in the corner and put your foot down, it just sort of scrabbles its way through. All in all, I don't really have as much negative to say about the Golf as I thought I would. Um, it's a good little car. I, I wouldn't mind having one of these, apart from the fact that they're so common and not that interesting, but it is good. And um, the front end, so much better than the old hatches that I used to drive, the old GTIs. Um, Yes, the steering doesn't really involve you massively, but I think I could probably live with it. I think it helps that this is a manual. Um, I just, if it was another horrible flappy paddle, I'm sure it would have, I wouldn't have gelled with it at all. Also, when we're talking about the Golf, we can't forget all the incredible mod cons that this does come with. Things like Bluetooth, connection to the radio, it's got adaptive cruise control so it maintains a distance uh, to the car in front if you're sort of in heavy traffic. There's loads of little bits and bobs that this has. It'll be much more fuel efficient. I mean, objectively, I can already tell, it is a much better car than the 968, but will, will the 968 blitz it in terms of actually driving enjoyment which is what I am which is what I predicted let's well let's see the 968 traces its heritage all the way back to the late 70s it really started with the 924 the 944 evolved from that, I think, in 82, one of those years. And then, in the late 80s, early 90s, it was facelifted into the 968. The chassis here is pretty much almost exactly the same as the 944. It was really just a facelifting exercise, changing the body panels, that kind of stuff, which is no bad thing, because they are really, really good cars. The 968 though didn't sell very well at all and when it came out they decided to try and make it more appealing by selling a cut price version which was £7,000 less and that was the Club Sport. The Club Sport had a much tighter suspension package, it was lower, stiffer dampers, stiffer springs and all the creature comforts were gone so no electric windows, the remote control to the rear hatch. Uh, to the rear boot, even that was removed. So the Club Sport went on a diet. It sold for £7,000 less than the, the normal 968, but now it is by far the most sought after version. They cost around 30k or so. These ones, the 968 Sport, came out a year later. I think it's a UK only version, I'm not 100% sure on that. But it has the suspension package from the 968 Club Sport, but it has most of the niceties that the normal cars had as well. So it's a kind of a halfway house, but it should handle quite similarly because the suspension package is exactly the same. It's got a three litre inline four. It produces between 240 and 250 horsepower. In terms of shove, it actually it feels like a nice little engine. It's um, it's torquey. It, it has a bit of extra push around 5,000, so it just pulls a little bit more at the top end. Um, but you don't have to rev it uh, to get the best from it. This is such a different proposition to the Golf. It's so much more ponderous. You really. It leans a lot more, the steering is slower. It does feel like a much more dated car. The steering saves it. Um, it is a lovely, lovely system and you get loads of feedback. 
and it's much more involving to drive. There's such a bizarre driving position, though. I mean, I find it bizarre anyway. The dash just comes too high up. You're, you're sat low down, which is fine, but the dash also just comes too far up in the sight line, and it, it I find it quite annoying, really. Um, when I drove the Golf earlier, I thought that perhaps they felt about the same in terms of speed, but um, having now got into the 968, this is definitely slower than the Golf. Uh, as I mentioned, the one I drove was chipped anyway, so not a brilliant example, but it definitely had a lot more get up and go than this does. I love the fact that over the bonnet, you can see the two little lights that just sort of pop up like that. It's very nine, uh, 928 like in the way it, uh, it feels much sportier, but um, the way that the, what you see over the bonnet and so on really reminds me of the 928. It's a nice car to drive, but I don't understand where this Epitar comes from about it being such an amazing handling car. Um, well, I can't feel it personally. Um, it's a nice drive, as I've already said, but it doesn't, it doesn't jump out at me as one of the all-time greats. So I don't know maybe if the 968 Club Sport with the extra weight removed is just that bit sharper or whether this car, it's got 135,000 miles, so perhaps it's a little bit worn and uh, the suspension needs refreshing, but it's not, it's not as good as I thought it would be. I mean, one thing is that the, the Golf, although it's supremely capable, does feel quite toy-like. Um, all the controls on this are much more authentic feeling, if I can, if I, if I can come up with such a ridiculous statement as that. Um, but, it's a little bit of a disappointment. Sorry, Dave, I know this is your car. Uh, I don't dislike it, I like it, and I think there's lots of good stuff about it. The three litre four cylinder is um, actually quite a charming little four cylinder. It's smooth. It's definitely a lot more characterful than that golf lump which is so anonymous it's unbelievable could be anything um, but handling wise it's it's failing to convince me that it's uh, you know a brilliant car maybe I just need to spend more time with it maybe it needs Maybe it needs to be driven more to the limit, which I haven't been able to do. I do know that these are supposed to be incredibly neutral on the limit and very, very well balanced cars. It does feel well balanced. Um, front end is great. Everything about it really is pretty good. Uh, but it's not quite doing it for me. So really things are going totally different to, to plan and to the original reason why I did the video. Um, I was looking forward to advising you all to buy a, a lovely old sports car and not buy a horrible modern crappy hatch. And although I think that does apply generally speaking, um, today I've had to kind of readjust what, I've, what I think because it's not quite as clear cut. I thought. Uh, this is more involving to drive though, I mean everything about it is you do feel more connected to the road, it's just that it's um, not as amazing as I thought it was going to be. Something else really odd about the 968 is the seats. I find them incredibly squidgy and soft, clammy and hot in summer, um, but just too much soft foamy padding which uh, makes a big difference if it had the, the buckets I think the, the 968 would feel better in any case thank you all for watching please subscribe please leave comments it really helps please do follow me on Instagram number 27 vids you'll find me I'll put it on the screen now but that would be quite helpful as well 
You'll get behind the scenes stuff. You'll see what I'm doing and what's going to come out in the next few weeks. So well worth doing if you can. Thanks for watching. See you soon. And bit of a helicopter. This, I think, is the most modern sort of VW. Fuck. Right, I'm starting off in the... I'm starting... Apart from the Beetle that I was going to die, but certainly that I was going to buy. A lot of information back, and it's certainly not fun uh, in, as a steering, as a system for... Oh, my God. It's, uh, it's got a... It does have a sort of a, a workman-like... A, a, what do you call it? It's got a 